sometimes I come up with a solution that is eight on engineering and two on artistic. And sometimes there's a solution that is 10 on engineering and 10 on paintbrush. Okay, we have the clock escapement marble gate. Some of you might think that Martin will never finish this machine as long as he go for the artistic flair with more spinning wheels and it looks complicated. And you're absolutely wrong in this case. I admit there have been moments during this process where I've been going into the dance because of artistic flares. This time is different. One example, these plywood parts you see lying here, they are not needed anymore with this design. The pressure of the marbles has been a huge concern. This design uses the pressure of the marbles, okay? So here's some of the pressure parts that I don't think I need, but I have to make sure, so I've set up a test. So I've rigged the marble cue up there, and if we look under, it comes out here. And then I taped together with a new pipe, and boom! <laughs> so you can see, this height is the highest ever from the marble divider, and I added a lot of extra marbles. Let's try if the clock escapement can handle the pressure. Wow. Not a single issue. Wow, it's less friction than ever. And it works till the last marble. This is so amazing. Wow, it's faster than everything else, which means I will be able to play faster music. It's crazy how much things are solved by this design. Woo! 10 on engineering, 10 on artistic. This is totally a design suggested by the Wintergarten community on Discord. This thing simplifies so much on the whole machine. These gates make the routing from the marble divider straight down through one PMA pipe, straight down into the gate, a breeze. Changing to this design is what will make me finish the machine. And in this case, my decision making is governed by an inner compass. <laughs> You might not trust this inner compass, but it's my inner compass that got you watching in the first place, okay? I looked at the first frame of Rosero's video on this, and in my inner compass, I just knew this thing is the future of the Marble Machine X. In the videos, I naturally make the Marble Machine X look better than it actually is, right? If you thought that why change the Marble Machine X worked great, that was never true. That was perhaps just an illusion from some of the videos. Imagine a vibraphone melody. Dun, dun, da, do, 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 click, 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 click. Time, right? Having a clock mechanism is like a comment on time. Time is so interlinked to music and our lives are so interlinked to the concept of time. Having this feeling of time passing through the melodies. I can quit the video here. Now I wanted to make a prototype to try if this worked for real on the Marble Machine X. And I could use the CAD from Rosero, which was great because Rosero already figured out some important angles and stuff to make the marbles exit correctly. We have debated material choices a lot in this design. I would like it to be a plywood wheel because of the visual looks, but also POM or Delrin or metal has been up on the table. I want to use laser cut stainless steel because stainless steel is most often not magnetic. Stainless steel with plywood would in my mind be the best aesthetics. So now I can bend a manual prototype by using the CNC part as a template. So I will get my whole location and my marble path pretty accurately in this handmade prototype. For the real thing later, everything will be laser cut and will be self-locating. So here I'm using the template to drill the holes in the perfect spot. And it seems to work great. And then I can weld the marble lane onto this thing. I need something to keep the gear from sliding off the shaft sideways. I'm going to try to cut a groove 
and use a circlet clip. Circlet clips are very, very space efficient and it's important for this design that it's very narrow. <laughs> that's clean. That is clean. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. I don't have a lathe, but I actually managed to cut a really nice groove on the drill press. And the gates need to be as small as possible. And the clock design is half the height of the previous plywood design and actually more narrow than the previous design. So also space-wise, this is a win. I'm going to weld on this little axle now for the clock mechanism and to make it completely perpendicular I'm using this CNC machined plywood piece. The hole is 4mm and it should hold the axle pretty nicely. So this plier is pushing the ring open. Oh, <laughs> that's so satisfying. It's a little baby dinosaur ratchet. First marble drop. Yeah! So now I need to position this second rail that the marbles will run on, like this. And for that I made these spacer blocks. So that's how the rails are registering and later this is for the last rail. On the real design this will be a laser cut metal part that I'm going to weld on so that will be self-locating. Okay, I'm happy with this placement and then I'm going to weld on this bracing on the back side. All this is improvised on the prototype. So I'm using my blocks here and here to hold this top rail here that I bent using this template. And I captured one marble in there and let's have the first test run here. Hahaha! <laughs> Don't take what you're seeing in the videos at face value. So for example, this prototype looks like it's really complicated to put together. It's because I'm just doing a manual version of this design now. If this is going to go on the machine, all these parts will be laser cut and come finished out of the package just to tack together with some spot welds. Everything lining up perfectly every time. It looks like this is difficult to build. I actually think this will be easier to build than the plywood gate. This pallet is meant to fall with gravity and shut the mechanism. It's so light now, so I don't really trust it. So I'm actually going to attach a spring here. I don't want that on the real thing. I want less parts. So I want to find a pivot point and a heavyweight pallet to exclude this whole thing. I think the pin might be stainless and I'm welding it to mild steel. Please let me know in the comments if you think the world will explode. Yes. The clock tick is already starting. This was the old dropper design. It looked like this. As you can see, it comes away from the whole construction here because it has to have clearance here and up here was everything. So on the new design, we can remove this and enter this. So we can have a streamlined shape that follows the shape. Everything is much more compact. There. When this is always returning to the same spot, it will always very accurately open this pallet. I found a perfect clearance here. And I actually went ahead and made a little tack weld on my dropper here. So I'm gonna keep this tack weld on for the rest of the installation because this is exactly the spot I want this to end up in. So I'm putting cardboard on the side here. Look at that. Look how streamlined this looks. I mean, come on. So in the tick-tock mechanism, this is tick and this is tock. I'm using a magnet here to position this. And this position is crucial. I think we put it somewhere in CAD there. What I have to figure out is when the marble drops, because the marble needs to drop exactly when the wheel hits the tock. So let's just do 
There is the marble dropping. Let's just weld this on with a small little tack weld and try this out. Speculation can only get us so far. Empirical studies will get us all the way. Now I'm gonna break the weld I did up here. Yeah. Real moment of truth here. Yeah. And now we can put it on the machine. Okay, which world do you want to live in? This one, a threatening Star Wars plywood enemy. Or this one? <laughs> it's a little bit of a leading question. <laughs> Thank you for your service. A for effort, you're just not good enough. Pain, my friends, that's temporary glory though. That's forever. <laughs> I thought this was the most simple solution ever. Simplicity is like an onion. You can peel layers off. This is like 50 parts here, 50 parts there with different techniques and stuff. Gone. So we don't need this. And I was thinking of, of letting this be there, but I actually want the prototype to look clean. Let's take this off. Don't be sentimental around your bad ideas. Iterate on them. Look how floating this design is. That's kind of amazing. And look how the plywood gear is actually standing out. I want a contrast against all the metal. Look at how this wheel is like capturing your eye. I am two welds away from knowing if this is a plug and play design. I just want to weld it on, start the machine. I want it to work first try with no tweaking. Last weld everyone. Last weld. The eagle has landed. <laughs> And it works. I'm actually surprised it worked so easily. It looks complicated, but it's kind of counterintuitive. This is actually simpler than anything else I've ever tried. So yeah, I'm over the moon about this. As you can tell, this has kind of lightened my Marble Machine X spirit again. There's going to be another wheel on the other side of the design when there's two tracks per gate and I'm looking very much for the process to go over this whole concept and design something for manufacturing and getting all these gates onto the Marble Machine X as quick as possible. So yeah, it's time for me to now tell a little bit the backstory leading up to this and give a huge credit to the Vindegatan Discord community that is actually behind this all happening. This story begins with the Swedish artist John Cardell sending me this video of a marble gate idea. Seeing this simple design made me just think like, what am I doing? My stuff is too overcomplicated. This looks so much simpler. And that got me thinking, I need a simpler design. To me, this is so cool full circle because Jan Cadell is one of my absolute favorite artists all time. It's a Swedish artist making mechanical music instruments. And I went to the legendary Hultsfeld Festival and I saw Jan Cadell live playing with the Rhythmobile Mechanical Orchestra. I stumbled onto the concert and that moment led me into wanting to build mechanical music instruments. So this is a live video from Hultsfeld Festival and of Jan Cadell playing with his mechanical orchestra. And when I saw this, I just fell instantly in love, of course, and wanted to build mechanical instruments myself. So now having a design suggestion from Jan for the Marmachine Machine X is full circle, very special for me. Inspired by John Cardell's design, I went to MMX community channel on the Vintergatan Discord and posted this gate idea. Simplified gate, the simplest possible in my mind. But then I saw something else. Rosero had posted this video.
and it was just game over in my brain. It was like, okay, this is, this is it. Right away, I went to work to take care of the most important stuff, posting memes on Discord. <laughs> So the absolute first issue that I knew about this gate is that the throw length, the travel length has to be adjustable because the arms on the Marble Machine X opens at different lengths, which would break this mechanism. So that was my first little worry about this. How can we actually solve that? So from here started an intensive discussion on Discord about all these gates. Together we made this spreadsheet with all the potential designs. Up here to the left is the design that we're all used to, the plywood design. And then comes the escapement, escape wheel design. And then I've added now the broken escapement, which will take care of the travel length, the one you saw in the beginning of this video. And then we have a plethora of marble gates. All this was done by the Discord community in like half an hour, like crazy, crazy cool. But I knew from the start that if I could get the clock design to work, that would be my favorite. I want to give public credit to the origin of the clock escapement design. We have Gonsonator 1982, who came up with this very early. Philos came up with this very early. Mirin Maru came up with this er early. Rosero made the prototype. And then Dekinox and Aber Derbart. In this spreadsheet, I can link to where the original idea was posted. So Dekinox idea. Here's the escapement from Aber Derbart. So here's a suggestion from Philos. Super nice CAD. So here's the original post from Gonsonator 1982. And Gonsonator have been very active in this pursuit. So extra shout out to you Gonsonator for being part of making this escapement wheel happen. And what I think happened was that Rosero saw the idea from Gonsonator and then came up with this uh, YouTube video that I happened to see. And of course, there's also a Wilson design. <laughs> What I think will happen is that Wilson will get one channel on the back side of the machine as an easter egg, like the highest string on the bass guitar, so he can play like doo -doo 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 -doo, solo on one string. Finally, Wilson is helping with something, right? After all these years doing nothing, we found a purpose for him. <laughs> So then on the evening after releasing the Plygate video from last Friday, when I ended the video to say that maybe I don't have to use this, I started designing in CAD just for fun. So it begins, helm steep of designing. <laughs> so the design is smaller, it's half the height, and I had a clearance problem on the height. It eliminates the need for a pressure gate, it is a pressure gate in itself. It just removes so many parts. And you see, I made all these holes in the pallet arm, in the lever arm. That was at this time I thought I would put a link on different place to take care of the different travel throw. And I just went crazy posting all the iterations. And here you can kind of see the mirror idea that this design can be mirrored really nicely. Escapement on the back side could improve visibility of marbles. So here's the escapement on the front and then I immediately moved it to the back. At this point, you can see I'm still into having a link from the dropper arm and then a normal clock escapement on the back. And I didn't like this link, so I put the escapement on the front again. We're looking at Louvre's mini marble machine, how he built the marble pump there. And here, feel the hype. Here I started to be like, okay, this is brilliant. Links look better here. I'm li really fretting about this link position because I don't really know how to do it. So then I started to think maybe there is like another way to drive this wheel, something like this. So we moved the marble rails into the middle. So the center of the marbles are supported over the marble gear. That was Rosero's suggestion because he experienced some clamping on the prototype. Here I'm just reposting my screenshots because I love them. <laughs> Here I'm still battling with the links. You can see I made the links smaller. They look nicer like this, but we still have the travel issue. And here comes my breakthrough. Clock escape gate simplified and fixed, so it works regardless of travel length of different channels. The link is totally gone, so less parts. It's not only gone, it's totally gone, okay? <laughs> 
So this was a breakthrough moment for me. The left anchor falls with gravity, no springs. So the way I found this idea was I was sitting staring at CAD the whole day. How can I do this links? I don't like the links. I don't like the links. How can I fix the different travel length? From just looking around on escapement mechanisms, I found this from Bruce Genie, which is a YouTube channel that I really like. And I was like, wait, this is doing exactly what we wanted to do, but there's no link in between them. So I, I realized that that pendulum can go as far as it wants to the right on the screen. It will leave the wheel locked regardless of how long it stay out there. So game over <laughs> or game on, depending how you see it. With that realization, I could start making the prototype. So I posted the idea and start to get a lot of replies from the community with good things to think about. And I just want to make a huge shout out to the MMX community channel on Discord and everyone who came up with this clock escapement mechanism. It was just so fun and I'm actually really, really happy that I could contribute a little bit to the idea. It's mainly the, an idea from the community, the whole concept, but I found a broken escapement solution to make it fit on the Mar Machine X. So far for me, this is like the most prime example of collaborative designs. Everyone are just here because everyone just loves mechanics and loves problem solving. And we kind of gather around that as a community. It's actually pretty epic. So just thanks to everyone on MMX community and on the whole Vintergot on Discord. I just saw this new post from Gonzonator who describes exactly how I feel. So I'm just going to read it. Can I just take this opportunity to thank everyone on here for being such a good crowd? Everyone is keen to help each other, very keen to provide <coughs> constructive, <laughs> constructive criticism, which bring everyone else along. Every day I see the myriad ideas floating around and I'm inspired. That's exactly how it's been for me. I'm really proud of our culture where we don't try to one up each other. Everyone is here for the same reason. So it's very little, my design is better than yours attitude. It's basically, yeah, more ideas, more solutions. And then the idea, it's a meritocracy. The best idea win. Like to celebrate the fact that we're all trying to be a little bit less wrong every day.